So what I want to show you is what it takes to resolve plantar fasciitis. This is a condition that I have treated for years and had really, really good results. As long as we actually follow a longer kinetic chain, the patients adhere to exercises, both in terms of flexibility, mobility, and follow up with the strengthening exercises. But let's just make sure that we understand it's not a matter of just treating the feet. We have to work all the way up from the hips, down through the hamstrings, the calf muscles. We have to consider both the primary movers and the antagonists. And then we get onto the feet. And if we do that, people are quite astounded with the results that we can achieve. So let's start with working a little farther up, basically up on the hamstrings. So one of the most common areas we'll have to start out with is the hamstrings. You'll notice when you test people's mobility on that, they're really limited from sitting for too long. Uh, quite often people don't realize when the hamstrings tighten up, it changes the whole architecture of the pelvis. Basically pulls the pelvis backwards, we start to lose the curvature in our lumbar spine. It has effects throughout our entire body. So, you doing okay there, Mickey? Yeah. Let's go on your hamstrings a bit here. You've never had tight hamstrings, have you? Oh, never. Never. Okay. So we're going to work around there a little bit. You're a little tight today, aren't you? Yeah. I even stretched. Yeah? <laughs> working these areas pretty hard lately? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. So yeah, you can really feel the tension there. So as I'm working through here, I'm gonna wait, make my way across in terms of the hamstrings, the semimembranosis, semitendinosis, biceps femoris on the outside. As I'm going through this, I'm gonna consider that these all have to be in balance. Not just one side, but the other side too. So people think because they have plantar fasciitis on one side, you only have to work one leg. That's not true. You need balance, you need symmetry in there, otherwise, it's going to affect all sorts of things in terms of muscle imbalances right down to your feet. You okay? Oh yeah. Now, after I get on the hamstrings here and I start to feel those release, this one is starting to release a little bit. Yeah, right? actually. Yeah. I'm going to get on the adductors. Now, why the muscles on the inside of the leg are so important is that these are the antagonists of your glutes, specifically glute medius. Glute medius basically helps your pelvis to stay in a neutral position. You see somebody walking down the street, almost right away you'll see if they have a weak glute medius because one side will drop down a little farther than the other. So we have to get on there and kind of free those up. And this one's probably even more tender. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Good. You okay? Oh yeah. All right. So we work this out because if we don't, neurologically this actually dampens the input to that muscle and you start to lose activation of your glutes and right away you're going to have a decrease in hip strength. And there's major research out there showing that as your glutes start to disengage, that you're going to lose stability in the lower extremity, all the way down, the knees and the feet. It's going to change the amount of pronation and supination. So we've got to work these areas. You doing okay there? Oh yeah. Tell me the truth. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna take a look at the shins, and this is really important. So another area we've really gotta focus on are the shins. Now why this is so important is we have a muscle in the front here called the tibialis anterior. It goes down and the tendon from that wraps around the bottom of the foot. On the outside of the leg here we have the peroneals, longus and brevis. Now that comes down, the tendon actually wraps around the ankle, goes underneath, and then underneath the foot, those two tendons cross. And this is one of the major support systems of your foot. And people don't realize if these muscles are really, really tight, you're going to lose a lot of your shock absorption capacity. So I would get in there and start working my way around a bit. Good. How you doing there, Mickey? That's nice. Good. Must be doing it wrong if it doesn't hurt. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, and then I'm going to get in the just a little bit, and, and as I work through each of these, depending upon the restriction of the individual, will determine the amount of time I spend on that area. I literally have to feel that area release. It's not just a matter of doing three or five passes. The point is, do I get on there and I start to feel a change in the tissue? Once I do, then I can move on to the next area. Okay, I'm going to bring this up into a version a little bit. Good. Doing okay there? Yeah. Yeah. A little tight there. A little bit. Yeah. So, as we release this area here, 
This can literally have an effect in terms of increasing shock absorption capacity on the bottom of your foot. A lot of people don't realize that. Okay. Doing okay there? Yeah. Okay. So, so far I got on the hamstrings and I started working on the adductors. Now, if I find that the person has really tight quadriceps, I might move up into this area and actually release those too. So I have to work down the entire chain here. Not only that, let's say this person has some kind of dysfunction up in the hip, or for some reason, let's say I muscle tested the glutes and I find they're not engaging. I might actually go up there and start working on that area. So a common question is, why are you working on my glutes when I've got a problem with plantar fasciitis? It's because the entire kinetic chain is, influ chain is influencing the stability and function of the foot. Really important factor. So when we finally make our way down to the feet, we have to consider not just the area around the heel, where most people experience pain, but we actually have to work all the way up, both on the medial, lateral side, in the middle, right up to the metatarsal pads, and we have to consider both soft tissue and joint function. So quite often we get into areas where a person has plantar fasciitis, we'll get in around the heel, and they'll say, oh, that's incredibly tender there. What they don't realize is the other structures in the area, they may have a restriction in this area, or they may find that one area is not gliding over another and it really tightens up. And it basically it inserts into the heel bone or the calcaneus and that starts to pull away from there, the outside of the bone, the periosteum. That creates some inflammation. So you actually have to work all the way up and down here. So we're not just going to stay on the heel itself. We're going to get on that area, but we're also going to work our way around the entire foot. How are you doing there, Mickey? Yeah, good. Yeah, you're feeling a little tight there, but yeah. not, not bad though. You're not experiencing any pain lately? Feature. I broke that foot last year, so. Oh, thanks for telling me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, I knew that you broke it. <laughs> You're fine there. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm doing good. Good. So we would work numerous structures. There's actually three levels, layers of tissue that I would have to work through and see whether one layer of tissue is gliding over the other. So I'd spend quite a bit of time on the feet there. But in addition to that, I'm also going to work around and make sure that we've got good mobility in all the joints. Hey, nice nail color. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so both getting in, working our way around, making sure we've got good mobility, going up, checking all the different joints. Let this drop a little bit. There we go. Making sure we've got mobility in the calcaneus itself. So it's not just a matter of treating the soft tissue. You have to check both osseous structures, the joints, and the soft tissue working your way through the entire foot. One thing that's really, really important here is that I actually get back on the calf muscles. So let's head there next. So it's really important when we're considering restrictions in the calf muscles that we also consider that we've released the hamstrings because we have direct connections between the hamstring muscles and the calf muscles. Now, we have the gastrocnemius and the soleus, two superficial muscles, but we also have deep muscles underneath this we have to consider and the relationships with how they glide in this area. You don't have tight calf muscles, do you mean? Not at all. No, not at all. So I'm going to get on there a little bit and kind of work my way around. And what you're going to notice is that I'm not just getting in there and doing pin and stretch and sort of getting in one area. I'm actually putting a little bit of rotation into the foot here. So it's kind of like taking bands and twisting them so I can actually feel whether one layer of tissue is gliding over the other. I can feel the superficial, the intermediate, and deep layers here, but okay, so yeah, how are we doing there? Right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> won't go too, too hard there. That's a good spot. <laughs> I believe you, really. Okay, so we kind of work our way around here. Now, as I was saying, we have direct fascial connections between the hamstring muscles and the calves. There's also direct connections between the calf muscles and the Achilles tendon, which is made up of both the gastrocnemius and the soleus, and that basically connects directly into the plantar fascia. So if I don't release this all the way down, we're not going to get the results we need. Most amazing thing is people will come in and they say, you know, I've had work done on this before, but nobody released the hamstrings. And they didn't get that far up on the calf muscles either. They just kind of stuck in this area. 
and you know I've only seen you a few times and I've already seen substantial functional changes and a decrease in pain so this work is really powerful so the key points to get from this video is that if you're going to resolve this condition you have to work up the entire kinetic chain you can't just work on the foot after years in practice and when I first started I that's exactly what I was doing I was working in a localized area but a number of decades later and treating hundreds of patients I can see how even chronic cases of plantar fasciitis can actually be resolved but as I said in the beginning you still have to do your exercises you still have to do this on a daily basis work with flexibility and mobility first and then we work on strengthening and then balance proprioception and the results you can achieve from this approach are huge so don't continue suffering with this condition give it a try